Hey guys, so let's go ahead and take a look now at uh, the power control interface, the APCI, if you will. This is basically going to be your main command center uh, for the ProDB. Uh, so this is going to be an optional extra. This is not standard. This is kind of like the fancier version of it. And basically what you've got is going to be a couple things. So looking at the front, this is going to be your main control switch. There's a couple different mode settings here. Um, the control switch is actually exactly what they use for the uh, Blinder HP 905s. I've actually got a spare cable here that's designed specifically for the 905s, and if you take a look at it, it's literally the exact same thing. And so what it does, you've got a couple different settings here, everything from uh, turning the whole system off. I've got my uh, red line over here as well. Uh, you can do things like having it in, uh, you know, in parking sensor mode or what's it called, uh, parking lights mode, but the thing isn't going to actually respond. Uh, you can do, you know, radar and laser on. Uh, you can do, basically, this is going to be your, um, what's it called, your jammers are in receive mode. And then if you do this, this is going to be full jamming everything, everything. So a couple different settings. Uh, with the 905s, the way you JTK is, and this is kind of annoying, I'll show you this in a second. But the way you JTK with uh, the 905s is you switch from 3 to 2 like that. And this switches from jamming mode to receiving mode. This with your jammers is going to be um, parking sensor mode, but no laser response. And this is full system off. So uh, that's how you would actually JTK. And when you're using this thing in the field, that's what you're going to be doing. One thing that I've noticed is you'll take a look. The uh, radar detector starting up. There's a point in between where if you start rotating this, kind of halfway through, you'll see everything actually shuts off. The lights shut off, the radar detector shuts off, and your jammer shut off. Um, when you switch it back to one of the modes, everything turns on. So the problem is when you JTK, um, it's going to reset everything, including your radar detector is going to repower cycle, your jammers are going to have to restart. When um, I JTK, I really like leaving uh, it in this mode, and the reason is it's still is in receiving mode and it'll tell you how long you're still being shot and it'll still ID the gun that you're being shot with. Um, so that's one thing I actually like about the 905s compared to the LIs for example where you have to kill with the power switch. With this one you JTK and you can still actually put it in receive mode and it kills the jammers instantly. But anyways this issue with the power being cut as you uh, turn this it doesn't happen with the 905s but it does happen with this. I've talked with Martin at ProDB, and that is something that they've addressed with their engineers now, and in the uh, future versions, they're actually going to update this so that this isn't an issue anymore. And uh, when I get an updated version of this, I'll take a look at that and I'll show you guys that. But for the time being, when you do this and you change modes, uh, everything is then going to like reset and power cycle. So as you can see, um, I've got my radar detector hooked up to it, and that's pretty cool. Uh, I've got two different mode lights here, which I'm going to turn this off for now because that's gonna be kind of annoying. Okay, so you'll see like there's a couple different light settings. So you can actually tell based on the colors what mode you have it on at a glance. So pretty handy. There are a couple dip switches in there. There's four of them and they control, uh, the two on the left is going to be controlling the speaker. When this thing goes off for photo, uh, you can actually get an audio notification which is pretty cool. There's a speaker in here which I'll show you guys in a minute. It is obscenely loud on purpose. It's like 60 decibels. It's designed to scare the pants off of people and it is obnoxiously loud. So I've got it turned off right now, but uh, we can turn it on and I'll show you guys how that works. Um, let's see, what else? If we take a look at the back, let's go ahead and unplug everything. Okay, so let's take a look. This is the back of the unit. You've got a couple different, uh, I guess, plugs right here. This is going to be for your radar detector. I've got it hooked up for demo to my red line. You can plug in a Passport Max, a V1, anything that uses the standard um, plug right here will plug right in. One limitation is this is not going to be compatible with Escort Live. The reason is Escort Live, the plugs need, um, if you get a hardwired version, it's going to need a pass-through to go from the car uh, into here. This only has power out. So this is going to be your power source. So if you're getting powered from Escort Live, uh, you cannot use it with this system. Um, same thing with Savvy if you're using the V1. If you're using Savvy, you're going to have to power it through this and you'll use like Yavi 1 or something if you want Savvy stuff. But anyways, that's 
a little bit beyond the scope of this. These are the two plugs for your HP 905s. Uh, they're little bitty plugs and they're designed for one of the CPUs. So you can actually plug two different CPUs into this if you want. So actually in your car you could run up to eight heads, which is pretty cool. So if you want to run eight heads in your 905s, you can. The two plugs here are going to be your Ethernet size plugs. They are designed for the ProDB itself. You've got one for the rear plate, and if you want to install a second one, you can install this for the second plate. Uh, you'll notice you've got the uh, parking lights when this is on. The two dip switches here on this side, you can control the parking lights and manually turn them on and off. The dip switches are down like this. I know it's really tiny, but if the dip switches are down to set to three and four, that's going to be uh, parking lights on. And you can change those to adjust the front and rear parking lights and turn them off. The front one should not have parking lights, for example, so you can turn them off. Um, and then last but not least, you've got the two plugs here for the older Blinder M47 jammer. So if you have those, this is also compatible with that. And then last but not least, you've got your power plug. And oh, uh, these two screws here, these are actually, you can power them. And they are designed to accept an input to uh, jammers such as you can do K40s, you can do, you should be able to do your LIs, you could do um, 9500 CIs, STIR Plus, anything that would normally be hardwired, you can power it to these. And to do that, you actually have to open up the unit and install a jumper. So I figure, you know, why not? Let's go ahead and do it. So let's push this stuff away. And let's go ahead and go inside. Okay, and so once you've got these two screws removed right here, uh, the middle one is going to be a longer screw. The outer one is a nice little short screw. So we're going to go ahead and remove this. And then this whole front part basically just slides out. So we're just going to notice the easiest. Whoops. My bad. <laughs> I took it out before and uh, it was a little bit tighter before, but now it was a little looser. So sorry about that. But anyways, comes right out. And then this is going to be the uh, control unit itself and the guts. So basically what you're looking at, if we take a look up close, you've got, you can see um, all the solder joints for the control switch. You've got your LEDs right there. You've got your dip switches. And I was told they actually did make the dip switches a little bit tough to set. Um, when you've got this thing aligned, it's actually really tough to get in there and get the top switches and pull them down. It's really tough to have done it, but it's tough. I actually kind of cut up this thing a little bit with a pocket knife trying to get in there. But uh, it's easier to do when you got this plate off, and you can put the switches up and down. This right here is the big uh, speaker. It's really, really loud. Um, with the dip switches, you can make it silent or set it to low volume, but at full volume, it's actually like almost too loud. And in future versions of this, they're actually going to make it with a smaller speaker. So that would be pretty nice. Um, now, the main reason I wanted to open this up is if you take a look uh, right here in the middle, there are these two slots for a jumper. So what this is for, it comes with a little jumper here. And for you guys who've done jumpers before, pretty easy. If you've not, it's really, really simple. All you do is you take the jumper and let's do this, this side right here little square things and they're just gonna slide on over uh, these two spots that say JP1 so they go on like this and slide on and that's it and what that is for is when this is enabled these two screws that I had mounted here uh, this is gonna be V you can see it's for voltage and G this is gonna be your ground in order to activate these two screws and make them powered you have to put the jumper in place when you do you can now uh, wire up your STIR plus your 9500 CIs your LIs or whatever you want you can connect them to this and that'll then make these screws hot uh, you will of course want to cover them up with electrical tape once you're done because they're gonna be live exposed you know power running screw heads, so you'll want to cover them up for safety. But yeah, so in order to enable them, you'll need to uh, install that jumper there. Sorry. So, okay, I'm going to take this off for now. And then to uh, put it back in place, there's these little, uh, what are they called? It's kind of like little guidelines in there. Hopefully it shows up. 
and basically you just take this and slide it carefully into the little ridges and it should slide back into place. This thing is a little bit loose, but that's okay. I can to go in. Nope, and it goes off on that side. Yeah, it's just below. So let's get that one and that. They don't catch when, uh, I guess it's a little bit tapered, so they don't catch when you're going like this. It only catches until you're about like that deep. So, and uh, you'll see that the thing I was mentioning, this is actually not connected on this side at all. The only place that the faceplate is connected is right here on the uh, the switch. So I guess basically this joint here is the only thing holding the faceplate on. So. Alright, let's go ahead and slide this bad boy in. I think so. It looks like they kind of bite in. So I'm going to switch this little itty bitty screws you got a screw and you got this little like ring thing with teeth which go in to hold this in place so yeah there's kind of like some marks there so i'm gonna put it this way cool so as you guys saw um i did take the jumper out it's not connected right now so because of that these two are not going to be hot they do nothing right now um, if I did have the jumper still in place, it would make these run at 12 volts, so. So yeah, there you go. That's the look at the uh, the APCI, the Auto Power Control Interface. Uh, this is an optional extra. It does cost extra money to get it. Uh, if you don't get this, you're going to get a simpler setup. Um, it's still going to be, from what I understand, uh, this control unit here plus some LEDs. So I guess you install them in your car. I'm not sure exactly how uh, they're going to work, but I think they're going to be sending me one of those as well. And uh, when I get that, I'll do an update video and I'll show you that too. I don't think it's going to give you the extra controls with like a radar detector and a jammer. To be honest, I mean, I already have uh, one of these things hardwired in my car. And my radar detector, because of the power issue, and because it's not compatible with Savvy or Escort Live, I wouldn't be running this personally. But for most people, you know, designed for the majority, if you're just going to be plugging in your radar detector, you're now not going to have to hardwire it. You could, if you want, plug it right in there, and you're good to go. Same thing with uh, if you're running 905s or if you're running another type of jammer, you could just plug them in there. And then you would have one, uh, you know, kill switch for everything, which is pretty cool. You've also got, uh, what's it called, once they fix this power issue here, which they're going to do, that'll make this a lot more useful. Um, that way your JTKs will be good. You won't be actually cutting power to your radar detectors when you kill your jammers, all that good stuff. So, yeah, if you want the extra functionality of this to have, like, one master control switch for your jammers, your radar detector, and your ProDB, then this is a pretty cool extra. Um, they are going to be making an updated version of this as well, which will be wireless, which would have like the LEDs and the control switch as well. It's going to have actually three LEDs, one for uh, the lights for the ProDB, another one for the jammers, and then a third one for the radar detector. So that's going to be another thing that's coming up. And uh, as far as the housing on this unit, it's pretty solid. It's pretty good build, stiff and sturdy, uh, not like super heavy. It's plastic, but it's sturdy. Um, a little bit lighter than the red line, a little bit rougher texture, but uh, all in all, pretty cool. If uh, you want it, it's now available. So cool. There you go. And thanks for watching.